Hello everyone. The topic that I am going to cover today is the Euler's totient function. The Euler's totient function is also known as the phi function. And what it basically does is that it counts the number of integers between 1 and n inclusive which are co prime to n. Now, what are co prime numbers? Two numbers are co prime if their greatest common divisor is 1. Let us look at some trivial cases. So, for n equal to 1, phi of 1 equal to 1. How? Because GCD of 1, comma n. So, from 1 to n, only one number exists, that's 1 itself. So, the GCD of 1 with n, which is 1, is 1. So, the count of the number of uh, count of the numbers from 1 to n inclusive which are co prime with n is 1 in this case let's take another case for n equal to 2 so phi of 2 is equal to 1 how so there exists two numbers between 1 and n that is 1 and 2 so if we take the gcd of each of those numbers with n then we get GCD of 1 comma 2 is 1 and GCD of 2 comma 2 is 2. So there exists only one number which is co prime with n. So therefore phi of 2 is equal to 1. Similarly here are values of phi of n for the first few positive integers. Let's learn about some interesting properties of the Euler's quotient function. So the first property is that if we are given a number p which is a prime number then gcd of p comma q equal to 1 for all q ranging from 1 to p therefore we get the euler's quotient function phi of p equal to p minus 1 the proof of this statement is pretty straightforward all the numbers from 1 to p minus 1 will be co prime with p because p itself is a prime number and it only has two factors 1 and the number itself which is p so it will only not be co prime with itself and be co prime with all other numbers therefore the gcd of all numbers from 1 to p minus 1 will be co prime with p therefore the count is p minus 1 which is the exactly what the Euler's torsion function is about. So phi of p equal to p minus 1. That's the first property. Now, ne now let's move on to the second property. The second property states that if p is a prime number and there is an integer k greater than or equal to 1, then phi of p to the power of k equal to p to the power of k minus p to the power of k minus 1. Again, the proof of this is pretty straightforward. Since there are exactly p to the power of k minus 1 numbers between 1 and p to the power of k that are divisible by p, so we have to remove that. So, with the if we apply the principle of inclusion exclusion, then p to the power k represents all numbers and we have to subtract the numbers which are not co prime with p to the power k, which is p to the power of k minus 1. Hence the relation phi of p to the power of k equal to p to the power of k minus p to the power of k minus 1. The third property states that if a and b are relatively prime, then phi of a into b equal to phi of a into phi of b and an extension to this property in general for not co-prime a and b, the equation becomes phi of a b equal to phi of a into phi of b times b divided by phi of d where d 
equal to the GCD of A comma B. So reiterating, these are the properties of the Euler's torsion function, and the purpose of me introducing you to these properties is that with the help of these properties, we will be computing phi of n and implementing our C++ code. And we will be computing the Euler's torsion function through the factorization of n, which means decomposition of n into a product of its prime factors. Therefore, if n equal to p1 to the power of q1 times p2 to the power of a2 times pk to the power of ak, where pi are prime factors of n then we can write phi of n as phi of p1 to the power of a1 times phi of p2 to the power of a2 times phi of pk to the power of ak now this follows directly from the third property which we discussed and we can substitute all the pi to the power of ai using the second property. So then our equation will become p1 to the power of a1 minus p1 to the power of a1 minus 1 times p2 to the power of a2 minus p2 to the power of a2 minus 1. And on simplification, we get the final equation as phi of n equal to n times 1 minus 1 by p1 times 1 minus 1 by p2 times 1 minus 1 by pk. So let's start coding the Euler's quotient function. Uh, the function which will compute the value of phi, I'll name it as phi and it takes an argument which is an integer n and it will give the count of the number of integers between 1 and n and n inclusive which are co prime with n which is exactly the user solution function. So let me just store the result in the variable and initialize it with n. I'll run a loop from i equal to 2 till square root of n. Okay. And as I said that we'll be using the prime factorization technique somewhat similar. So now if we have an i such that it divides n, I mean it's a factor of n, then y n modulo i equal equal to 0, which means you continue dividing n by i unless, until we don't have any factor remaining of i within n. And After this, we'll subtract result with result minus, or we can write it in shorthand notation as result minus equal to result by i. If you observe carefully, as this is exactly the equation which we had derived through the three properties and which is shown in the screen also. So it might look different but it's exactly the same. So one more thing that we have to cover is the final edge case is that if n still remains greater than 1 then result minus equal to result by n. And in the end, we will return result. 
So now that I have coded the Euler's quotient function, let's test it for few test cases like I had shown initially in the screen. Uh, so like we have taken the test cases and we'll be, for each test case we will be providing an input n and for each n we will be outputting the phi of n value. So I have taken in the input file 21 test cases and numbers ranging from 1 to 21. So if I run this program, I should be getting the exact values of phi of n which is phi of 1 equal to 1, phi of 2 equal to 1, phi of 3 equal to 2 and if you remember you can go back to the first screen uh, in which I showed the trivial values and all these values match exactly the same. So that's it, that's the Euler's torsion function and it's a very important concept which is asked in many applications and many problems in competitive programming. So it's a great tool to have and know while solving problems. So that's it from my end for this video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the upcoming video tutorials. Thank you.